Has your computer ever randomly started overheating? Or you're just getting a massive pop in frames? But let's check out what we have for this video. Hey everyone, today we're embarking on a bit of an experiment with my trusty old computer. This machine has been my faithful companion for nearly a decade now. Over the years it's served me well, but I've often wondered if it could benefit from a little TLC in the form of repacing the CPU. I myself forgot about this for quite a while now, and it's very interesting that my computer actually hasn't been running that rough. My thermal paste has not been changed in quite some time, and just gonna say it, we're gonna see what it's like under that CPU cooler. Now some prep work, we're gonna need some thermal paste. We went with the Arctic MX4. You could go for an MX5 or the Thermal Grizzly, but the one we went with is perfectly fine. You just wanna make sure you go with a reputable brand. So when you have your computer, make sure you flip the power supply off. You go to the front, press and hold the power button a few times to make sure we just discharge the power supply. If anything, make sure your power supply is off and at least you're grounded. Now there's a light on the inside where the motherboard is, just make sure that is off. Now if your motherboard doesn't have a light on it, just press and hold that power button for a few seconds. So now that we've done that, we're gonna go ahead, open up this side panel, and we'll get along with actually taking off the CPU cooler. Now I would suggest putting your computer flat on a table. I didn't have any space to do so. So I went ahead and I left it upright. It just makes it a little bit easier when we're just needing to realign the CPU cooler. Now this is the same rig I used in the RG rig reboot back in 2020. But I'm not sure I actually listed out each component. For all of you wondering, here are the computer specs. For CPU, I have an i7-3930K, 32GB of DDR3-1666, an RTX 2060, I used to have a GTX 680, and then I have a 240mm AIO cooling the CPU. I have an SSD for storage, and I have an X79 Sabertooth motherboard. And the only changes I've made since then is just this RTX 2060 and an SSD. Well, while we're in here, I'm also going to do some dust cleanup, so we might as well just get some maintenance done while we uh, go ahead and repaste this CPU. Now, the RTX 2060 has been in use for, let's say, two years now. We don't need to repaste it yet. Now, ambient temperature or overclocking might interfere with how often you actually replace the thermal paste, but it's perfectly fine. The card's warranty ends up in a few months anyway, so we'll just take it apart then and repaste it. But all in all... Yeah, let's go take a crack at it and see what's under that CPU cooler. Now, the reason behind this video was to see if you can actually breathe some new life into your older hardware. Now, my i7-3930K has been reaching its decade mark of usage. Quick side note, the CPU did come out in quarter four of 2011. I know I just said decade of usage. It's It's been 10 years of use, straight using this thing, even though it did come out. 13 years ago and this is 10 years of my usage and i did buy this thing used so it means that this thing actually has been in use for 13 years give or take but for 13 years this thing's still running pretty strong i do get some issues now and then but it's more of a power supply issue rather than a cpu issue now let's see what's going on now the reason for this video was to actually see if we can breathe some new life into our older hardware now a lot of people say on reddit that thermal paste is good for five six seven years a lot of people just don't do their preventative maintenance in trying to keep everything fresh and working 100 percent a lot of people are in that mindset of if it's not broken don't fix it but at the end of the day you're better off just doing some maintenance every so often trying to keep everything fresh and working correctly if you don't replace your thermal paste i'm not saying nothing bad will happen as in i haven't replaced my thermal paste in quite some time and we're going to check out what's under the cpu cooler but it's better off to just Replace your thermal paste every so often with some good quality thermal paste and keeping things running nice and smooth. Now, when we see our after tests, we're going to see how big of a difference it actually made. But in the meantime, let's take off the CPU cooler and see what's left underneath. Now, before I did this, I was running a bunch of tests beforehand where I got our pre repaste benchmark. That should mean the thermal paste is a bit more liquefied. And that's not the case. The thermal paste is literally stuck to the CPU and the cooler. The tests I ran beforehand did help them not bond like a glue. So there's at least that no ripping the cpu out of its socket in situations like this where the thermal paste is literally dried out i suggest taking your lint-free rag or paper towel soaking them in ice bubble alcohol and just leaving it on the spot to try and loosen it up for me that kind of helped but it was a lot more of elbow grease with ice bubble alcohol and a plastic pick trying to scrape it all out i went ahead and i started cleaning up both the cpu and the cpu cooler now it did take a little bit of elbow grease 
but we finally got it off. And just like that, we have a brand new CPU and CPU cooler. Let's get on with repasting it. Now there's many different ways you can put this application in. I put in this little X and then little dots to apply a pea-sized amount of the thermal paste at the center of the CPU. Don't spread it with your fingers. It's a pain to clean up and we don't need any of that residue from your fingers on our CPU cooler. Next, we need to put the CPU cooler on the CPU, just pretty much remount it, try to get an even spread. Carefully place the cooler back on the CPU, ensure that it's aligned correctly, secure it with the mounting or clips. Try to make sure you don't over tighten it. You don't need to make these super tight, especially these stock coolers or AIOs. If you ever wonder if the paste is fully on, you can see the cooler, take it off, just make sure you don't touch it when you put it back on. And with everything back on, it's time to power on the computer and see if our efforts have paid off. We ran a series of tests to gauge the impact of repasting the CPU cooler. Now to keep things consistent, I left all overclock and XMP settings and any game settings are the same throughout the test. Now unfortunately, I didn't do multiple game testings. I only ran 3D Mark Mono Warfare 2's inbuilt game testing. This is going to be a little bit difficult to read, but here are our time it took to do our test. But we're going to focus on this. Normally you get this as an output for 3D Mark, but since I didn't get all the screenshots, we're just going to continue on this way. This has our CPU score, our GPU score, and then our overall score. At the end, we're going to take an average of the three tests that we ran beforehand and the three tests we ran after to see what kind of performance boost we actually got with the repaste. So our first CPU score was 4589, and then our graphics card was 7245, leading us with 6666. Our next test brought us 4800 on our CPU, 7491 for our GPU with 6909. And then our final score brought us 4820 on our CPU, 7489 for our GPU, and then 6914. And then for our repaced CPU score, we get 5063 with our graphics card getting us 7541 and our overall being 7025 as our performance benchmark score. Now for some reason after the repaste TimeSpy decides it wants to actually change how the scores actually come up. For example, here's our CPU, here's our GPU, here's our overall benchmark score, while before the repaste it was actually CPU, GPU overall. But let's continue on. And then for our second repaste test, we got an overall score of 7039, CPU score of 5073 with a GPU score of 7556. And then our final test brought us a total score of 7501, CPU at 5271, and our GPU at 7571. Now let's see what our gain in performance was with our averaged out scores. And an overall average of our test before our repaste for our CPU, we have 4736. For our GPU, we got 7408. And our overall performance test brought us 6830. After the repaste, our CPU brought us up to 5136. Our GPU brought us up to 5556 with our overall benchmark score being 7056. Remember, we only repasted our CPU, leaving everything, all settings, everything the exact same. To make it easier, I just changed the names down below. For our overall gain in performance, we averaged about 400 points for our CPU, with our graphics gaining around 226 points, and then an overall performance gain of about 148 points overall for our 3D Mark score. Now, let's hop over to Call of Duty and see what kind of performance gains and differences we can get on that. Now, just a fair warning, Call of Duty has a weird benchmark system. Now, it might not seem like we have gained any performance on that, but even something as simple as 148 points overall for our 3D Mark score makes a big difference for video games. See what that brings us. Unfortunately, I didn't get any BIOS temperatures reading beforehand, and this being an older series chip and motherboard, there are no live temperatures from any application. Even MSI Afterburner does not have a reading for temperature. I do stand corrected when I said when it comes to testing, MSI Afterburner actually wasn't showing my CPU temperature or my GPU temperature. Well, turns out that it actually does show my CPU temperature. The unfortunate thing is, there's a weird tweak you have to do to get it to actually overlay on the screen when doing these benchmarks, and sometimes it just didn't want to work at all. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show on screen just an example of a benchmark I'm going to run, the overall CPU usage and temperature on a new benchmark after we just repaste everything and see the highest that we're going to hit. Now we are currently overclocked to supposedly 4 gigahertz on the CPU. It is not a stable overclock. I do experience some blue screens every so often, and I do want to at some point go back and actually make this a stable 4 plus gigahertz overclock on this CPU but that is going to be for another time, but the overlay is just kind of broken. So here we have MSI Afterburner up doing its hardware monitor since it was able to find temperatures. Now, right here, we supposedly have our CPU temperature. 
the minimum is 43 and the maximum was 55. now 55 was after about two hours playing warzone now the new warzone kind of doesn't use as much as the older one the one with mw2 so the max temperature we only see was 55. now i can't say that these numbers are super accurate because we were maxing out our cpu now of course if i run a blender test trying to stress the cpu maybe we can get it a little bit up there maybe to 60 degrees celsius but i'm just again unsure about how accurate these temperatures are especially when 55 is our max for our cpu and then we scroll all the way up to our graphics card and it had a max temperature of 79. that to me is more accurate and it kind of makes sense because our gpu sitting right around let's say 80 degrees celsius max is sitting inside the case with possibly some fans going over it, while our cpu is sitting in an aio pulling in and exhausting air so it kind of makes sense as to how we're hitting right around 80 degrees celsius for our gpu and that's about it for our msi afterburner again fortunately i didn't get any pre-test using msi afterburner to see what degrees we were hitting and now we know what to test for next time but again it's like it's running almost identical but at least we're getting more performance after the repaste And here we have our performance testing for Call of Duty. So the numbers we want to focus on, don't worry about our system information. Most of this just stays the same per usage since we kept all the tests and our settings the exact same. The numbers we want to focus on are here, our average FPS and our bottleneck percentage. Now I'm just going to say this again. I don't really trust these numbers and we'll get to why in a second, but our average FPS on our first time round was 60 with a 99% bottleneck in our CPU and a 1% bottleneck in our GPU. Now everything was the same in our second test with a 99% bottleneck in our CPU, but we got an average of 98 FPS. Again, everything was say the same. And then for our final before the repaste for our test, we got again another 99% bottleneck in our CPU with an average of 98 FPS. Now, if we move the test over to our repaste, let's see what we get. For a repaste, we get an average of 99 FPS with a bottleneck of 93% on our CPU and 7% on our GPU. Our second test showed the similar things, again with the 99 average, and our final test is again 99 average with a 90% CPU bottleneck and 10% GPU bottleneck. So the repaste did help shift some bottleneck percentages around, but the reason I don't trust these numbers are because if we change the monitor out, of course the drivers end up changing later on as well, I was fiddling around some settings and I got a 50% bottleneck and 50% bottleneck between the graphics card and the CPU. Now we know the best way to do it is just pick a few games that have built-in benchmarks other than Call of Duty and test that way. And well, would you look at that? After repasting the CPU, we see a noticeable drop in temperatures under load. Clear sign that this simple maintenance has taken a significant difference in the cooling of our aging CPU. Now our CPU cooler is getting a bit up there in age, so its cooling performance might drop as well. But just this simple repasting did something great. So was the verdict repasting my CPU, repasting my 10 year old CPU was definitely worth the effort. Not only did we manage to lower temperatures and possibly extend the lifespan of this component, but we also breathed some new life into our aging system. Now if you're like me and wondering whether it's time to repaste your CPU, don't hesitate to give it a try. Just with a bit of time and effort, you can unlock any performance that your system has been dying over the years to come back to life. I'll keep our MX4 paste in the description below. Comment down below what you want me to check out next, and I'll see you all in the next one.